Welcome to the Strenuous Life Radio, the podcast where entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, men and women, may learn the essentials and dreaming skills of the strenuous life. And now your co-hosts, Jimmy and JR. Men and women, learn the essentials and dreaming skills of the strenuous life. Don't you guys come in soon, Phil. I'm reading this. We're doing a book review. Part of the scholarly part of Gentleman Scholar. We do a uh, a lot of videos about Gentleman, but... Now we need to go back to the scholarly end for, for a little bit, if you, if you don't mind. So, let's sit down, and let's have a little fun, if you will. Okay, our, um, any criticism of the book, the book is called Call the, Call of the Briefing by Marlon Fitzwater. He was the press secretary to George W. Bush, and also worked in the press office, I believe, also under Reagan. Any criticisms of the book? I can think of one in Central, and that was uh, the, the first chapter of the reintroduction there, <laughs> using the Lord's name in vain <laughs> when Clinton was taking the oath of office. Not because we necessarily agree with Clinton, but because it's just, it's just ungentlemanly. It's wrong. Use the Lord's name in vain. I know. <laughs> we, we've we got to be careful sometimes about making an oath or swearing an oath. So there we go. Now, let's get into some of the lighter side about the book, some, some of the good stuff. I like how uh, Fitzwater, he was, he was always talking about finesse in the press and meeting with the president and his advisors and coming up with some particular ideas on what they could do to fix matters in the country. And you saw this. In many ways, yes, I did. It was a, it was a strange matter. But, you know, in, in D.C., and back in those days, there were some compromises. There was this meeting together of the minds. <laughs> Maybe not so much nowadays. Of course, the elements of the book, it isn't just about the politics of what's going on. Uh, there is also some big emotionality involved. Jared, would you please tell me about one moment in which this was going on? <laughs> well, I remember reading in the book that... Uh, the Reagan administration had to remove Donald T. Reagan from office. And Reagan was begging the president and his advisors not to do it. But one person, it was obvious, wanted him gone. And that was uh, Nancy Reagan. Now, I'm going to be bluntly honest with you. I think a lot of politicals on both parties, they, they, they put Nancy Reagan in the wrong light. I think she started a wonderful initiative on just say no. Because let's, let's face it, drugs, any kind of drugs, whether illegal or prescription, is, is just plain uh, Well, using your prescription as prescribed by your doctor is very key. Ain't that right, Jimmy? <laughs> yes, sir. I think, I think that's something we need to be kind of observant of a little bit more. But... The thing is this, we're going to get off the psychology. Anything else strike you about about this book? Well, there's another one that's also an emotional deal, but it's not so much. And that is um, the resignation of John Sununu. This was under the Bush administration. And there was a lot of high tension because... Uh, I believe at that time, Sinuli was involved in scandal. We're going to do some research real quick. I know back in the day, Jimmy, there was talk that uh, there might have been some, some kind of scandal involved, and Sinuli felt like uh, his being a disarray in Bush's domestic policy team. You know, the, the, Bush's, the Bush administration... I always felt like it was kind of shrouded in, in mystery. 
And I really felt like the Clinton administration is where I really started cutting my political teeth. I'm still very much interested in politics, as we should, as in some ways I feel like we should be, even more so in the Republic. If, if you cut out all the emotionality and reactivity and, and try to look at it in a more proactive way, which is sadly more lacking in this country. Anyway, um, be that as it may, we're, we're going to look some more at this at this book. We saw a lot of, of you know, we saw a lot of some of the, the dirty work, you know, when Reagan had to go and when uh, and when Sununu had to resign and some of the often infighting. Uh, and, and this is common, I think, in, in, in White House office politics is, you know, sometimes... Some of the people in the administration have felt that the first lady is, is too involved. Not so much nowadays because <laughs> I think ever since uh, the Clintons, the first ladies have been particularly been involved in, in political things on, on both sides of the aisle. Now, how far I take it, this I don't think that this book is just about politics. It's it's about personality. Well, that's true. I mean, you, you see all the personality in the president and his advisors. Marlon Fitzwater, if I remember correctly, he had quite a, a personality himself. He did. He did. Um, well, I think this is as far as we're going to go on this, this book review, and I'm hoping that this uh, um, enlightens you guys. Because part of being a scholar and a gentleman, or a scholar and a lady, is to be somewhat scholarly. Read some books. We may have another book review coming up. Remember, you only get one shot. Hope you enjoyed listening. Till next time. Uh, I want you to subscribe. Till, until next time, don't sit there and take it. Build your dreams so you can go out there and take it. I want you to do what others don't. So you can be what others want. And do what others want so you can have what others can't. And like and until next time, create, achieve, and pursue happiness. God bless y'all. Remember until next time, we love you. And y'all take care now, you hear? God bless you. <laughs>